First of all, Shana, thank you so much for your time to uh, join our showcase interview. So, would you mind use your language to say hello to our audience? Hi, salam alaikum. So, salam alaikum. What does it mean? Uh, peace upon you. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. So, hey, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, because I, I, uh, I remember we worked together in a uh, ceilings company. Uh, actually, it's a material company. We do a lot of crazy parametric research. I really enjoyed it our time. So when I yeah. when I have this project, I feel like hey, you are from the Saudi. So this is the. Case. Uh, we, we should be have a good conversation about your challenges for your education, and also you have a lot of amazing work. I really want to learn more about it for for a long time. So this is a perfect time we can have a conversations here. So would you mind introduce yourself, who you are, and then where you come from, and also can you tell us more about your major and study? Yeah. Um. Well, hi. I'm Sanal Abdulwahid. I'm from Saudi Arabia, from the Man City. Um, I studied in Saudi Arabia first, um, a major that was called interior architecture. It was like a uh, mix between interior and architecture. But um, in fact, it was architecture major, but then the strict people said that no women can't study architecture, can't be architects. So they added few uh, um, interior uh, classes to the curriculum to make it interior. Uh, when I came to the to this uh, major, it was ten years old. So a lot of the architecture background was taken away from the classes, and mostly it was interior. But there was a lot of leftover from architecture background because even the teachers and the professors were architects actually, not interior. And some of them were interior and some were architects. So I do think there is this clash between interior and architecture in my background. And you will see it in my projects actually. And most people will identify me more with being an architect because I loved it more, but I, I think, and that's why I chose my projects to be more architect architectural than interior while other uh, colleagues and classmates they were more into interior so the more into the finish and uh, furniture so i worked in saudi after graduation in 2011 i worked for um, an interior firm and then as an interior designer and then i worked in uh, actually also a manufacturing of steel that's what led me to the same company that i worked with you in the aluminum company, so the manufacturer. So um, um, I worked there for a few months and then I got a scholarship to study for master's. I came to the US in 2012. I stayed there for one year to study English. It was in Boston. And then I moved to LA when I was accepted in our center college design. And I was actually pursuing furniture specifically. I was applying in the US only to furniture uh, uh, colleges and then or uh, major. But then when I came to LA, I discovered there is something that is called SciArc and it was so cool. <laughs> and I didn't know about it. I was like, oh damn, I really wanted to go to SciArc, but... Uh... <laughs> I was lucky to work in this company and it was all parametric, so I got the Actually, also at Art Center, they were focusing on uh, like advanced innovative design. So we actually took Grasshopper four semesters. And that was uh, really a great luck. And I'm, I think if you would ask me like, what is the best thing that happened during your education? I'd say meeting uh, my professor in Grasshopper, Jason Polarski. I think it, it was the like, best thing for me to learn from. Um, and then, yes, I came to the US, studied furniture, environmental science, master of science in environmental design, furniture track. And there were only five classmates. Imagine that. There were, there weren't many 
in furniture. It was an expensive major. And uh, a lot of people in our center, they come to me and ask me like, uh, I would love to study a furniture, but I think it's expensive. And I didn't realize and really until later, it was so expensive even now for me to produce the pieces, like just the prototypes to convince people or like to develop a product. It is so expensive. And um, before I didn't feel it because I was spending only on myself and my small uh, pieces, but now I need to create more products. I need bigger team. And this is um, a really huge challenge in furniture. I didn't realize. Um, my idea was to study furniture is instead of designing one architecture model that is so cool and will take like 30 years to be built, I'll do one for design and it will stay. <laughs> I will sell like 300 of them. I don't know. I mean, the mass production, I guess, idea came to my mind. Um, and then I worked in the US for two years. Um, I worked in, uh, uh, in Santa Monica in a plastic company. We used to use resin, mold, silicon, and like in a workshop. Uh, environment and then I worked in um, lighting company they used to sell lights uh, mid-century style um, then I worked with the same company that we worked together in, and that was like for a year and a half so most of my uh, experience in the U.S. was in this company and in doing parametrics which was fun because I actually was looking to grow like professionally in this area, like to know parametrics really very well, because it's like, if you're not, like parametric is very important to know now to create crazy designs. You can't create same designs not using parametrics. It's just kind of impossible. Or uh, it's gonna take you 30 years to design that thing. Wow, that, that's great. So I know that some of our audience, they may not know what is parametrics means. Would you mind um, just share with us what does it mean uh, in parametrics uh, in terms of design and architecture? Sure. So um, parametrics is about, it is a visual uh, programming language that you create designs from um, a formula, and that formula is like algorithm. So you create an algorithm um, to create a design, and you and the nature is all made from from mathematics, like how the trees grow, how patterns on animal are. They are all made from numbers, and it is very similar. If it's not the same, we use numbers to create patterns, to create forms. And um, so we use that, that there is this part of it that is it, it's algorithmic. And then there's this part of it that is uh, parametric. Like we can create this algorithm. And after it's finished, it's like a program. We can apply it to a design and we can just change the dimensions of each design, like the the parameter of it, and then the design will change perfectly with this design. So that's where the word parametrics, I, I think, comes from. <laughs> yeah, that I, I think this is very um, good explanation about parametrics. And also one thing I want to add is, so the parametric, you mentioned it, that it's based on variable, right? So also we can take the, the input from the nature Let's say we take this from the sun, we can have a sensor to measure what is the sunlight, uh, then also measure the sound and then use, use those information to turn as the input to inference the design. So that's I, I also using this technique to work on the parametrics. Yeah. So cool. So yeah, we will save all the cool work and then in the, uh, in the later conversation. But I want to ask you one thing, um, because yeah. you, yeah, uh, you, you, uh, why you want to study in the uh, in the United States, and how was the process will look like in your country? So actually, it was like a, a wide nation thing. Everybody was getting scholarship, 
we got into a period of time there was uh, the schools in Saudi Arabia weren't enough for the graduates from the high school. Also, most of the Saudi education level was not close to the United States, of course. So they wanted people to go out uh, abroad to study. Uh, and their mission was not only to study, but also to take some of the culture of the uh, United States or the culture of the developed country, like the work ethics and um, and lots of uh, these things to make people a little bit, because we lived like in a bubble for so long, I just assume. <laughs> so they wanted people to open their minds, to meet people. And you know, when you go to the US, you don't just meet American, but like people from the US, you meet people from all over the world, especially in the big cities like um, LA or New York. It's, it's like you meet the world basically when you travel abroad. I have the same feeling too. So when I first started my education in the United States, I uh, I met with different people also in my school, SIA, right? So uh, yeah. I think dominantly is it's all international students, a lot of international students. I have I have classmates from Europe, I have classmates from Austria, so I have classmates mm -hmm. from Mexico. I only have I'm only met one classmate from India. I I wish I can have met more uh, in <laughs> India architect more. I also have people from yeah. Japan, China, Korea. So also um uh, local students too. So this uh, we always have conversation about different culture, right? How we look at the same how we have different perspective to look at the major is what amazing. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is one of the uh reason I want to study in the United States too. So, um, so in, at that time uh, in your country, they offer an opportunity for you to apply school um, to, and also study abroad to different country. So is this the US is the only options or they do have a more? No, option? actually, almost the whole world. Oh, got you. You can apply to any country and uh, they always give you two years language in any country and then two years for your uh, studies, like mm. bachelor or master or PhD. So, uh, and then why, but why you uh, want to study in the United States? Um, I actually wanted United States. I don't, I, my, my choice was random. I didn't have really background or like, and that was actually a weakness, I assume, because I didn't have, I didn't even know about fire, you mm. know? When I applied, I really wanted SciArc because I knew about it. I was like, yeah, I wanted this. You know, but I did have uh, good research, unfortunately. Actually, when I applied to our center called Design, also there's this thing in, uh, when we apply in Saudi Arabia, they have, um, like, there are a list of uh, universities you have to pick from. You can't choose any university. And when I chose our center, I was, it wasn't in that list. So they added it for me to, Oh, wow. to apply to it and I was the first person graduating from our center at Saudi <laughs> it's not the first person to get in there are other people who got in but I was the first Saudi from our center and um, uh, the thing yeah so when I applied to our center I was looking for furniture so that's why and then I remember before going to the U.S. my father was telling me if you want to study art go to Italy go to Italy and I was like mm -hmm. no Italy is like in Europe it's like it's still like I'm sorry for Italians, I, didn't, <laughs> I don't mean it, but it's like, no, it's like still in Europe, it's like an old place, I'm going to the US, and then when I went to the US, I went to Boston, and I felt like it's like Europe, no, I don't want Europe, I want LA, I want California, I want the most modern place in the world, mm -hmm. that's why I was, well, that's why I chose, and I got a lot, another acceptance from SCAD, mm -hmm. Savannah College of Designer, Art and Design, but I didn't want to go to Georgia because when I see the pictures and I felt it like it has much, I don't know, I, I wanted to go to LA. So mm -hmm. LA was where things are happening. Mm -hmm. And I guess I did choose right, but it was not a, based on academic or uh, professional reasons. It was mm -hmm. just choosing wherever it looked more modern, you know? Mm -hmm. Recently, I finished uh, one of the program uh, in USC, and then they talk about us center, 
And then I found that they have a lot of good program, like the uh, vehicle design major. They have a lot of animation design major. This has been an amazing school. So, and then, you know, our center also a good one. So I believe that you choose the best one when, yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky. That yeah. was luck. And I'm glad I was accepted. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, how how was the application process look like? So you talk about your your country. They offer um uh some kind of support for you. But how was the application yeah. look like? Yeah. So you apply. Um, I tell you, you have to pick from the list they have. Um, after you're accepted, you go to study English, and then when you when you study English, when you get to your like. Uh, your um, what they call TOEFL or IELTS de uh, degree, mm -hmm. you can apply for universities. Um, and then when I applied, I, I have to pick one of their list, and um, and so they don't need to talk to me. So I just pick uh, and I bring the letter of acceptance from the uh, college, and then I send this letter if it was from approved uh, college or university to the uh, Saudi culture mission in Washington. Mm. So they, but everything is online. So they mm. process it online and then they send you a financial letter. Mm. And then you give this financial letter to the, to the university mm -hmm. uh, and then they take care of it. So there isn't uh, any contact between me and the university about the tuition. So it happens all directly through the cultural mission. Oh, I see. Wow, that that's so cool. So that you just need to finish your applications and then finish your TOEFL exam, right? Then your yes. your your country have a department. We're going to take care of all kind of transaction, so that you yes. just prepare yourself ready to the United States. Yes. How how yeah. so? Uh, when you when you get accepted, what is your plan to uh, prepare you start to study in the United States? Uh, what was my plan before I wanted well, before to you be, before you you are brought to the United States? Um, actually, the scholarship program mm -hmm. started like long before I start. Uh, like it was started started a year before I started my bachelor degree. Mm. So since my bachelor degree, I wanted to travel abroad, and my sister and brother were in the U.S. already. Mm. My older sister and brother. So I wanted to go with them, but then actually also in my country, mm -hmm. in this major that I was in, they only accept 40 students mm. in the whole country. It's like really very, if you're, if you get in it, it's considered to be, you, you are considered to be very, 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 very lucky. Mm. I know a lot of people applied for it and they didn't get in. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is really hard to get in. I was yeah. really good. I can draw really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that you're also very talented too. So that is one of the reasons why you get into the part of the 4D students <laughs> have this opportunity. You know, I didn't even know I wanted architecture when I applied. Mm. I knew, uh, I know, uh, like this is, I don't know, private uh, mm. story. I know a person who wanted to go to architecture and then I said, oh, I'll do a interior design. We will be a perfect couple. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen, but that's why I got in it. And uh, yeah, no, no, it's good. <laughs> and uh, but I, I was lucky, seriously, to get in it. And I think my whole life was about luck. And I don't know how I went through life. Well, everything was luck. Nothing was planned for. Which is now when I know how my life was, I'm so scared of. Mm. You know, I I don't have plans. I, if you ask me, what's your plan? Now I have it because I mm -hmm. did learn and I have experience. But before, I had no idea what I'm gonna do in my life. Mm. And I didn't even it it didn't even concern me. You know, I didn't I wasn't even concerned. Mm. And I know you talk to me, and that's this is person who went to college. But I know a lot of girls that didn't go to college, and it's fine for them. You know, it's like normal. It's okay. And for me, I think if I didn't go to college and I was one of these girls, it's going to be a really sad story for me. But mm. I wouldn't know. Mm. So, yeah, I, I always believe that education will, will change your life. This is undoubtable. <laughs> so no matter how, how good you are, how, how um, 
just don't give up to to go through your education. You don't know when you will, you will get the benefit from your knowledge. So uh, I want to ask you when you started your educations here in the United States, can you share with us what, what kind of challenges you encountered before? Like you during <laughs> or yeah. before? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it first started in the United States. Um, like during the English classes, there was no problem. It was fun, you know? Mm -hmm. They give you a lot of exercises, a lot of trips. Uh, and you really are meeting this new city and new people every day. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel much of a challenge. Actually, it was like one of my best years in my life. <laughs> and then when I, <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. When I uh, started uh, a university, like in LA, I think I, I used to live my, with my brother and when I studied English. But then when I lived in LA, I think the first day I went to uh, buy shampoo. Mm. And I, instead of buying shampoo, I bought a conditioner. And oh. I went to college. I, the first day I was so scared because I washed my hair with conditioner only. <laughs> and yes, it was a... Um, that was a personal, you know, challenge for me to, to depend on myself. And mm -hmm. buying everything, um, and cleaning my clothes, and mm -hmm. ironing my clothes, and like all of these things are new to me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I didn't drive; that was a huge mistake. I should have gotten my license earlier, and I should have drove earlier, but I didn't drive. Mm -hmm. And in Boston, it was okay because the bus system is advanced. But in LA, it was. It, it, it you could also even say it doesn't exist it's so backwards so i did it this was a challenge mm. to um <clears throat> um transportation so i got uh i relied on bicycle mm. so even i went to school to art center on bicycle and came back on my bicycle and it was hard but uh, i got a lot of a lot of muscles which i love <laughs> <laughs> And um, so that's transportation, taking care of myself from all kinds of things like food, everything. Oh. And then um, yeah, school itself, I was so lucky because the whole uh, classmate, we were friends. We go to mm -hmm. school together, we sleep together, we, we wake up together. And the whole thing was a group uh, it was like uh, we were in a, t in a team call. It was everything, you know, the challenges that we go through. And we all lived in the same building. So a lot of it, they were, we were, uh, sometimes you can find people driving you, you know, they're dropping you in and out. And then I think in the university, I was considered to be this like spoiled girl from mm -hmm. Saudi, you know. <laughs> um, I think that was there in the background of their minds and uh, I think it created some tension and then uh, for example when I go to uh, the workshop they call me hey princess it was absolutely not cool I know. you know wow. and I I started hating going to that workshop and we needed it really because of furniture you need to create all your uh, prototypes and uh, but I didn't like it at all and um, that was a challenge and then I think the money of course was a challenge because it was really expensive mm. uh, to set furniture and lighting all the lighting thing um, and also because I didn't drive I had to use taxis before Uber <laughs> mm. and then Uber came it was good wow so how how did you uh, overcome your your um your financial burden when you was in the art center? So my father was helping me mm -hmm. mostly, and um, sometimes I eat very little. Sometimes I eat very much. Mm -hmm. That's a, you you just save money. Okay. You just save. Got you. Yeah. So. Is I, I met other international student too. So uh, she did the same thing. She had to cut the the, the living uh, expense to kind of save the cost. One one of the 
one of the thing is you share that with me, uh, because I, I do grasshopper and then do rhino design, right? And then I share my work to her and then she told me that how, how you can do it. And then uh, we do rhino. So do you have rhino uh, as your tools? She told me that she cannot afford it. So one of the thing is I want, want to see that in the future for this project, I would like to see that with, we can use her work and then we can do fundraise, run fundraising to help her to fund her mm. applications. Maybe I can talk to, um, to, to the company. Hey, this is a very talented girl. Can you help? I love that. So, and then, but beside the application, I would like to see that, uh, can we do a workshop? So right now everything is go internet, right? So maybe I can invite you as a tutor to have a one day workshop, maybe four hours to show what is your design yeah. principle in, in your career. And then also using the different tools to create a work. I still thinking about it. So after I interviewed 12 students, I will come up with a proposal and then I would like to invite you, you all us together to see which is the better option to move in forward. Great, great.